Amazing Conversations. I am your host, Andrea Revels, and I am elated to be joining you tonight. So tonight I have a guest speaker who I have known for, oh gosh, a very long time. She was a childhood friend and we have recently connected and I am just excited to have her joining me tonight on tonight's podcast. Her name is Michelle Wimberly Stevens and she is an experienced therapist. How are you tonight, Michelle? I'm doing great, Andrea. Thank you so much great, for having great. me. Great, yeah. great. Well, listen, if you would, because of course I know you, but just kind of give us a little bit about your history. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, yeah, so I'm native of Albany, Georgia, mm -hmm. born and raised here in Albany. I grew up with ponytails in my hair going to church. Um and just had that that the wealth of family all around me you know they say it takes the village to raise a child so we had that right. growing up you know also well yes um and um just a little bit um from leaving albany moved to the savannah area graduated from savannah state university mm -hmm. um with a bachelor's degree in social work uh, later um finished my master's degree in um, counseling psychology with Capella University. Mm -hmm. um, have been working towards my um, PhD yes. um, in psychology as well with the emphasis um, in, I want to say, uh, well, I had an emphasis in uh, uh, children, uh -huh. but I'm going to move that to looking at it from a more cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. So, um, so international um, perspective of cultures. So, um, because eventually, sometime in coming up in time, I want to be able to do research too right. as well. So that's just a little bit about me, um, and in as it relates to my educational background, mm -hmm. um, I have traveled abroad, um, some of everywhere. Mm -hmm. I lived um, <laughs> in Korea for the last two and a half years. Um, I've been back in Albany, Georgia. I can't believe I'm back home. <laughs> oh gosh! Um, but you know, it's been humbling to be back home. I'm back with family, I'm back with friends, people, being reunited with such a wonderful guy, woman of God such as you, and it's just awesome. Um, and so I feel humble, I feel blessed, um, and um, to be able to do that. Right. Well, and, and of course, I knew you had an extensive resume, which is why <laughs> I didn't even try to name and say all that, because I know, honey, you are a busy lady. Um, one of the things that, that intrigued me was because, of course, when you and I reconnected and you told me that you were uh, had recently moved back from overseas. Yes. And, you know, I've heard people talk about their experiences overseas, and you was just telling me about how much you loved it yes. and everything. But um, And then when you started telling me, even as it relates to one of the things that you do, because, again, mm -hmm. you do a lot. Yeah. Um, you have a very full schedule, I know, and I thank you for taking the time out to come here with me tonight. Um, I know that a big topic um, of discussion has been sexual assault, yes. um, domestic violence, yes. and I know that that's one of the areas that you specialize in. Yes. And I wanted you to just kind of share um, some insight on it as it relates to, you know, um, I guess triggers, you know, how people are coping. Is it just limited to the United States? I know, like I said, you've been overseas. Or, yes. you know, just kind of give us some knowledge regarding that. Okay, yes. Um, so, I would just say a little bit, um, I'll talk a little bit first about domestic violence. Mm. Um, domestic violence is a cultural um, thing across the world. It does, what I mean is it, it doesn't matter if you're black, mm. white, rich, poor, um, Hispanic, domestic violence is in every culture, okay. um, every ethnic group that, you know, that is on the earth. I will say, um, living overseas, I, I've seen um, the same types of things that you would see in the United States. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's done in a different way, maybe it's um, more subtle, where um, it's not, it's kept within. So I, for example, in <clears throat> living over in the Asian culture, if there's domestic violence, you would never really know it mm -hmm. um, unless you were connected closely with the family. Um, it's something that the family themselves, that they pretty much try to keep in a nutshell. The man is 
is essentially over the household. Uh-huh. Um, and if a woman is being abused, mm-hmm. that will be something that will be, you know, kept silent. So, so they actually practice the what what happens in this house. What happens in this house stays, stays in, in this house. house. Okay. Yes. Look, I thought that was a <laughs> what an African American. It's not an African American thing, but a practice. Uh-huh. However, it is um, for their culture a cultural thing. Mm. Um, it is frowned upon for women to go out and air their you know personal lives, their um, intimate situations that happen in their household. Wow. In the Asian culture. Uh-huh. I will say um, that you still see that even in the American culture. Mm-hmm. In some cultures, mm-hmm. um, like the African American culture, you can we can even say the Hispanic culture. Because when you're looking at the Hispanic culture as well, dealing with them, the man is usually the head of the household. Mm-hmm. The breadwinner. The breadwinner. Okay. And he's the one that says what happens and what shouldn't happen uh-huh. um, in the household. So, for example, as a therapist, counselor, I may have a family that I may go out and provide support to. Um, it is, and that family may not be able to speak English, mm-hmm. and I may not have, I may not be able to speak um, Hispanic to them mm-hmm. or um, Spanish to them. So, in situations such as that, you would act, ask permission to um, have a translator or ask permission to utilize someone else in within their culture mm-hmm. to translate for them. It is very disrespectful to bring a child into, for example, a situation where there may be domestic violence Mm -hmm. and the parents are at odds and you're walking into that situation. So that's just an example of. Mm -hmm. um, I've traveled to the Middle East. Um, In the Middle East, women have no voice Mm -hmm. there. Um, I have some friends that are from the Middle East and I can tell you that I've seen um, situations such as they um, not only have a voice, but they're brutally I've heard of and stories mm-hmm. of brutally um, beaten as a child, like a child, um, and things like that. Um, and so, those are just some examples of my experiences of dealing um, with various cultures um, as it relates to domestic violence. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Shell, let me ask you: Now, when you talk about domestic violence, mm-hmm. you you're speaking from a point of uh, male and female like yeah. marriages or mm-hmm. relationships marriages relationships and I can give you a perfect example mm-hmm. um I was uh, of course yeah I, me I'm a guy's girl all day long mm-hmm. um so you know being overseas didn't stop my worship didn't right. stop me from going to church yes. and getting involved and things of that nature you know um but I ran into um this Asian couple, couple. And um, this Asian couple was attending our church. She was actually our musician because I also was on the praise and worship team and was praise and wor- worship leader um, overseas as well for the church that I was attending. And um, she was experiencing domestic violence mm-hmm. um, in the home. It was very silent. You wouldn't have never known it. She would come to church and she would give God the glory, mm-hmm. give God the praise. Mm-hmm. However, at home, she would be beaten. Wow. Um, her husband was an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. So when we start talking about um, cultural differences and things as it relates to domestic violence, I would just say across the board, it's probably the same types of things that you would see anywhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but that was just an example. And so I, be- I, I became an advocate for her mm-hmm. because she be- we, we became friends. Um, and then I was able to get to kind of know her husband Mm -hmm. and then I was able to kind of start trying to encourage her to encourage her husband to come to church. Come to church. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, so because I know that if, if man has God in his heart, in his Mm -hmm. life, Mm -hmm. that God, the word would clean them up Mm -hmm. and things will begin to change. Mm -hmm. So I began to encourage her and she would say, no, he's not going to come. I said, encourage him anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, because the more you encourage him, the more, you know, he'll, he'll start thinking about those things. Mm-hmm. And I would see him sometimes drop her off. And then there were times I would have to go pick her up, mm-hmm. you know. So just things like that. But, you know, I was there for her. There were, there were times where um, I would 
she would call me late at night, whispering on the phone, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So, so, so how how do you? Because I I, I hear you say that for the most part in o- other cultures, mm-hmm. a lot of times is is kind of kept under wraps more. I yeah. guess. So how how do you know if a um, family is experiencing domestic violence? Because again, let let me just say for the record, I do know mm-hmm. that it does happen in male and female mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. But then I also know that there are instances and cases where it's not always the male who's the aggressor. Absolutely. Sometimes it's the female mm-hmm. who's the aggressor. Absolutely. So how do you, are there certain things you, you look and you recognize or... I'm just trying to get a. So I would just say, even with that situation, building a rapport with a person. Mm. My uh, my goal is to meet a person where they are, meet the client where they are. When you meet a person where they are, then you're able to draw in, um, build connection, build that relation, that trusting relationship. Mm. Without a trusting relationship with that person. You're not going to get much. Mm. But once you begin to build that trust and relationship, then you'll be able to pull out things. You'll be, they'll be free to tell you, you know, what their true feelings are. Um, and you'll be able to advocate for them more. Mm-hmm. Listening to what they need, what they want, not what you want, but what that, what, what that looks like for them. Right, right. Um, I can't be a fixer. Mm-hmm. God is the fixer. Mm-hmm. So usually when I'm working with someone who um, have, you know, experienced domestic violence, you know, my first thing I'll say to them in an indirect way, do you believe in God? Mm-hmm. You know, in the therapy, therapy field or being a counselor, you know, we can't infringe our religion, Absolutely. but there's always a way. Mm-hmm. So I would say, do you believe in God? And so when they tell me they believe in God, oh, that's my way in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there there are times when someone said, "Well, I believe this way," mm-hmm. so then I have to, you know, the Bible says to win souls. You have to be wise. Then the Lord will give me exactly what to say to that person. Mm-hmm. But again, going back to the question that you asked, it all starts with meeting somewhere, meeting someone where they are, mm-hmm. getting an understanding, um, and getting an understanding of what it is that they want from the situation, mm-hmm. and helping them understand. Hey, you know what? You are somebody. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what? You don't have to. You don't have to put up with this. Right. Hey, you know what? What this? What do you want to do for yourself? Mm-hmm. You know, these are the skills and qualities that you have laid out in front of me and said that you have. Oh, these are the qualities that I see within you. Mm-hmm. How about let's work on those things? Mm-hmm. You know, helping them build their their um, their uh, character, their um, self esteem mm-hmm. back up to where it needs to be. Because a lot of times when a person has been um, abuse in any type of way, mm-hmm. their self esteem is very low, right. and they don't know which way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, the young lady that I'm referring to that was in my church overseas, she was totally dependent upon her husband because he was the financial breadwinner. Mm-hmm. So you have you have some um, some people who feel like I don't know be able to escape this because. This person is the breadwinner. He takes care of the family or she takes care of the family. Mm-hmm. I have no way to go. I have no way out. Mm-hmm. So coming into that arena and point out, you have these skills. You have this. You, you are overcomer. Mm-hmm. You you are more than a conqueror. You can do these things, you know. Yeah. Just empowering them to believe in themselves, mm-hmm. you know, um, is usually also a way of helping them overcome those things yeah and and that's vital what you mentioned in fact um there's a piece i don't know which episode is going to be airing but i did an interview with a young man and we were talking about self-love and in essence once you know who you are you recognize of course you know that god created you yes and god is the center uh, or he's our center yes and when we recognize that god creates no junk he makes no mistakes yes then you have to get to the point where you love yourself. Absolutely. And when you love yourself, then you have to understand mm-hmm. that there are certain things that you should not settle for. If someone is treating you unfairly mm-hmm. yes. or abusing you, mm-hmm. then that's an option that you have to walk away. Absolutely. You don't have to stay there. Even if, you know, they are the sole provider. Yes. You know, God has gifted each and every individual yes. with the ability to, to create wealth. Yeah. Now, when I Absolutely. say create wealth, it may not mean, you know, you're going to be a millionaire. Right. But I mean that you can create 
enough revenue where you can survive. Absolutely. And and in doing that, I know with uh, domestic violence mm-hmm. being such a, a hot topic, and I say hot topic because, as you mentioned, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, it's not just limited to one race of people, mm-hmm. one age of people, mm-hmm. you know, one gender. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. Everywhere. So we have to do our business yeah. or, or our due diligence, should yeah. I say, to bring awareness to it. Um, so, I, I'm wondering too with the, what we've been going through with the pandemic mm-hmm. have you seen an increase in, in cases there has been um, a tremendous increase in cases mm. for domestic violence mm-hmm. one of the main reasons um, is because so many people have lost their jobs yeah. and people are becoming um, more financially stressed mm-hmm. and now you have you know, breadwinners, they're home together. Mm-hmm. They have nowhere to go. They're looking for work. Um, you have uh, money has ran out. 401k has ran out. Mm. Wow. N- now you have unemployment is no longer extended. Mm. What do I do? So now you're seeing mom and dad at home together where mom and dad are will be working or mom is at home at the same time dad is at home or vice versa. Mm-hmm. And it becomes a situation where there's anger, there's tension. You didn't pay the light bill or the we're going to get put out. You know, you're supposed to be the man or, you know, mm-hmm. this or that. And um, it's, it's causing um, the numbers to rise. Mm-hmm. Children are, are more at risk or at greater risk now um, watching and observing their parents' behaviors yeah. um, constantly as the pandemic continues to, to rise mm-hmm. or the numbers continue to rise. Mm-hmm. Um, you have parents that are working from home mm-hmm. um, also. And one parent may not work before, and now the other parent is at home working from home. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, my environment that I had in the daytime <laughs> where I could do yeah. whatever I wanted to do, right. you know, I'm all fancy free. Uh-huh. And so now you got your spouse at home in your space. In your space. Oh, okay. So, so now, a pressure cooker. now it's a pressure cooker. Mm. And so, so I would just say things like that brings on the the rise in numbers for since COVID has been since mm-hmm. pandemic has been, um, but there's hope, there's help, and there's healing. Yes, yes. You know, uh-huh. and and I I like even um, what you mentioned that when you talk about meeting people where they are, because yes. a lot of times you can uh, witness or know of or yes. even strongly assume that someone is a victim or is being victimized Mm -hmm. and a lot of times when it's not you Mm -hmm. us personally Mm -hmm. we may say well if it were me i wouldn't do that or i Mm -hmm. wouldn't stay for that never judge exactly that's the thing that you shouldn't say at that point you should say when you're ready Mm -hmm. just know that i'm I'm here yes and and i think that's that's the thing that Mm -hmm. you know we need to start doing more Mm -hmm. absolutely Mm -hmm. and i wanted to also share because you know, we live in a diverse type world. A diversity is just all around us. No, we can't get away from that period. Right. And the game is changing. Although the game is changing, and what I mean by that is you have, you know, same-sex relationships, relationships now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they are the same as heterosexual right. relationships. Right. They get into domestic disputes. Um, there are issues that uh, stem from physical, emotional, in those same um, types of relationships as they are in heterosexual. So when when me, even as a woman of God, and mm-hmm. I'm dealing with someone um, in that capacity, mm-hmm. I draw them by love and kindness and meet again, meeting them where they are and helping them realize, hey, you know what? Again, you are more than a conqueror. These are the skills that I see you possess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you worked in the area that, or you created something that you enjoy mm-hmm. based on the skill sets that you have? Mm-hmm. So drawing those qualities again out of them, getting them to talk about that, getting them to realize, as you stated earlier, mm-hmm. hey, I can make a life life for myself. Absolutely. Um, and it takes me back to um, the situation overseas. Mm-hmm. I began to to talk to um, the minister of music and mm-hmm. say, "Hey, you know, you play well, mm-hmm. you know." And then she began to share with me, 
Yes, you know, once upon a time, I worked on Bates. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, I worked within the Skies program, and mm -hmm. I was employed, gainfully employed before I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And so then I began to draw out those things and say, hey, you know, what about, you know, getting back into the working field again? You can do this. You got this. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it doesn't matter, again, when you're working with someone. People like, when whenever you're reaching out to someone, whether they, um, you know, uh, whatever they believe in terms of their relationship style mm -hmm. or not, Jesus draw us by love what? Absolutely. And, and kindness. And kindness, uh -huh. And so right. you want them to see the light of God in you at, at all costs. That's true. That you want them to know that you have the greater good in you to help them mm -hmm. beyond whatever you believe in. Absolutely. And that draws them. That helps them make that change. Well, because ultimately you, you I believe our mandate as believers mm -hmm. is to show love. Absolutely. And, you know, your fault may not be my fault. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. We're all striving. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, you can't say, well, what you're doing is worse than what I'm doing. Absolutely. You know, and, and what's the old saying, while you're pointing this finger, you yes. got three more coming back in. Yes. So, I think we have to remember that. Absolutely. And And I think it's very important to keep people mm -hmm. um, or to know where we are as it relates mm -hmm. to when you know your center, your north, your yes. true north, yes. which is basically the, the first principle. Yes. God is our creator. Yes, he is. When you know that, and you have to know mm -hmm. that we are required to treat people with love. That's you know, right. you, you can't judge people. And so many of us, we, we get caught up in it. Yes. But then at the same time, we have to know that mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing so great that we've done that we're not in that person's Absolutely. shoes. And that's why when we do see people or we meet people, mm -hmm. like you said, we have to meet them where they are. When we see and we meet them, it's important for us mm -hmm. to do what we can mm -hmm. to help them without being judgmental. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, God's love is the order of the very first love. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I love to share that. Uh -huh. God's love is the order of very first love first ever love. for Absolutely. me. So, um, and I embrace that mm -hmm. so dearly. And, um, you know, I, um, I want to also share when we're looking at sexual assault, mm -hmm. just to bring that in a little bit. Sexual assault begins with the demeanor of the other individual that feels like they have the power over someone. Mm. Um, and the other person feels like they want to make that person powerless. Mm -hmm. So in order to help that person, regain themselves even in situations where they have been sexually assaulted or sexually abused we have to again point out this is a good quality you have mm -hmm. um, and yes that happened to you but guess what you don't have to stay there mm -hmm. um, educating them on resources that are available to support them letting them know that no matter what time of the day, night you need support, I'm here. Yeah. And that's what I usually impart to anyone that I work with, mm -hmm. um, any of the victims that I've come in um, contact with. Um, we know also that, you know, there's a rise in um, sexual um, espionage mm -hmm. where um, young people, not even just young people, young girls are being um, taken. Um, or young boys are being taken. So like sex trafficking. Yes, sex okay. trafficking. That's a term I didn't know. Yes. Sexual espionage. Right. Okay. Uh, but it's sex, you know, sexual trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a young lady right now that I'm dealing with. Um, she was um, a part of that process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she's only 14 years old. Wow. Um, and she keeps running back, trying to run back to that lifestyle. And so, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, I had a conversation with her, and I said, you know, you know what? The next time you run, you may not be successful in getting back here. Mm -hmm. um, and I began to educate her on different stories and things of that nature where some young people were not able to get back. Right, right. So, sex trafficking is real. Um, once a person becomes... A victim of it's kind of hard for them to break that 
but then talking to them, Mm -hmm. encouraging them, educating them, um, making sure that resources are in place, um, also helps them to overcome. Well, that's what I, that's exactly what I was going to ask. I mean, you would think when someone has been um, rescued Mm -hmm. that that's an area that they wouldn't try and go back to. You would think that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I guess what you're saying that it's it's a mental thing. You have to work at retraining the brain and the mind and of course building that person's Mm -hmm. self-worth. You talk about resources and and Mm -hmm. I know we have to wrap this up but I wanted you to mention I know that you of course you know just as myself you're very busy in the Mm -hmm. community as well and you have a program Mm -hmm. and I wanted you to just kind of share just a little about your program you know what your organization does to meet the needs of those in need just before we wrap it up yes so um I'm the sexual assault coordinator for um, MCLB Albany Mm -hmm. and you know we have various resources Mm -hmm. um, not only um, with um, the military but also there is the same center here in the local area which Mm is um which is also called Lily Pad. Mm-hmm. So we, um, that's a big, big resource center that we utilize to support. We have Department of Family and Children's Services. Um, that's in, we have Liberty House. Mm-hmm. Also, we, we're, they're our counterparts. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, you know, we are constantly building those resources um, throughout the community. Um, so if there are victims and they um, are in need of support or, or need of help, um, and I also do things on the side too Absolutely. in the community. I yeah. have to. That's just my passion. Yeah. Um, I I believe that God's people um, need advocates out mm-hmm. there like you and me. Mm-hmm. And um, we were built for that, Michelle, mm-hmm. from day one. Mm-hmm. We didn't know it though. Look uh-huh. where we are, girl. <laughs> and look, <laughs> she's not miss 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 speaking. She said Michelle. So I'm Michelle, and she's yes. Michelle. That's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Hey, okay. we Michelle. <laughs> we were so you know look where we are so we are we are um our advocates we are you know leaders within our own means Mm -hmm. and we are fierce you know to bring those people back Mm -hmm. because that was embedded in us from day one from the word singing from the word (laughs) sunday after sunday friday after friday (laughs) you know what i'm saying so you know and you think about that now you know, maybe not so vividly all the time, mm-hmm. but it's embedded in us. So in us. that's why we have such a burning all the time. Absolutely. To absolutely. do more, right. to reach more, and things like, you know, we had that topic. Yeah, <laughs> I know we did. Well, so. Michelle, I'd like to say thank you again for uh, sharing your time yes. with us tonight. Um, as you can see, sexual assault and domestic violence both are mm-hmm. very pertinent topics. Mm-hmm. You know, just because it may not rest in your home. Mm-hmm. Just know that there's somebody that you know, whether it's a family member or a friend, Mm -hmm. that may be living a life that entails or involves those things. And the main thing is to let them know that you're there to support them, to let them know that there are resources Mm -hmm. and people that are available to help them. But a lot of times, if you don't know, then you can't get the help. But as Michelle has just mentioned on our conversation tonight, several resources, and I'm sure they'll be on the screen or in the comments, Mm -hmm. where you'll be able to see some places where you can go and get help. Listen, confidentiality is all a part of it. And just know that your name or no no personal information about you will be revealed. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're in need of help, just know that there are people and resources available to help you. So again, to wrap this session up, I am your host, Andrea Rebels. Thank you for joining Amazing Conversations. I ask that you go to our Facebook page and like it, uh, share also, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you again for another Amazing Conversation.